So in this video, we're gonna be giving you guys five tips on how to keep day geckos. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Josue from Josue's Exotics. And if you're new to the channel, on here we make videos about reptiles and amphibians and how to take care of them, just like this video here. So make sure you consider subscribing. So to give you guys a little bit of background information about the day gecko, the kind that I have is called a Madagascar giant day gecko, or more better known as a Felsuma grandis. The giant day gecko is pretty much a bright green gecko and they normally have red spots going down their back and another signifying factor is the red stripe going down from their eyes to their nostril. Giant day geckos can be found in Madagascar and more recently they've been moving out to the more oceanic islands and they've also been found all the way in Hawaii. And these guys can be fed with a variety of different feeder insects and also little pieces of fruit and other things like that. Another cool fact about the Madagascar giant day gecko is the fact that these are diurnal lizards. And if you don't know what diurnal means, it means that uh, during the daytime, these are the animals that conduct most of their daily activities when the sun's up and other things like that versus your more nocturnal species, which are tend to be more active during the night hours. So tip number one for giant day geckos, and in my opinion, it's probably gonna be one of the more important setups for these guys, is making sure that you have an arboreal setup for your day geckos. If you guys don't know, these guys are arboreal lizards, and arboreal means that these guys live in the trees and the canopies and things like that, and they're not really a ground dwelling type of lizard. So these guys are gonna need a whole lot more height space versus length going across a terrarium. So I would definitely recommend getting something more taller than it is wide. So the general consistency online recommends that you can use an 18 by 18 by 24, and this can pretty much house an adult pair of day geckos. And what I mean by a pair is a breeding pair of geckos. Since the males can't typically be housed together, they tend to fight a lot. So it's not really a good idea to do that. So moving on to tip number two, since you guys are going to be using an arboreal setup for these guys, I would highly recommend to get into something more bioactive. So what I mean by bioactive is not just having live plants inside of your terrarium for your animals, but also including springtails and isopods. Now with day geckos normally eating like insects and things, I would tend to go more or less with a springtail route, but with them being arboreal, they're not really gonna be on the ground searching for insects. So your feeder insects like crickets and things tend to be a little bit better. So I would go with that. But in your bioactive setups, they tend to hold humidity a whole lot better as well. And then like I said, they have the live plants and the live plants not only provide more structure to your actual substrate, it actually gives the gecko a little bit more places to hide and roam around the cage and stuff to climb on, which is good for them for their brain capacity and things like that to keep everything moving. But the key to this enclosure build is make sure they have plenty of things that they can climb on since like I mentioned before, they are arboreal. So moving on to tip number three, which is also a very important part of keeping geckos or any kind of diurnal species of lizards, is you're gonna need UVB for your animal. So what I have that I use for my animals is an LED floodlight that puts out UVB, but with the floodlights, they put out just enough heat to increase the ambient temperature to a pretty good amount for a basking area. Because these guys thrive between 75 and 80 degrees for ambient temperature, and they like a good basking spot of 85 to 90 degrees. So that way I can kill two birds and one stone and my gecko seems to be thriving. I've had him for almost a year and a half, two years and he shed for me every single time and he's still doing great. So moving on to tip number four is gonna be humidity. Humidity for day geckos is also gonna be a very important thing as well because these guys normally thrive between 60 and 70% humidity. So what I would recommend is getting you a reptile mister. Now the reptile mister that I'm using is a reptile mister junior. I uh, also have all these links for all the products that I mentioned in today's video down in the description. If you guys want to go check that out, you just have to click on one of those links and it'll take you straight to it on Amazon. And if you purchase it, I will get a small commission off of some of that stuff you guys tend to buy on there. So uh, I'd really appreciate you guys go check it out. But the Mr. Lizard Jr. is a small enough reptile mister for me. I normally fill it up maybe once or twice and I can take care of all my animals with that one spray bottle. 
Another important fact of why you need to get a mister is uh, because with day geckos, they normally don't drink water out of a water bowl, so you don't necessarily have to put one in their enclosure. So what geckos normally do is when you spray down the enclosure, they normally get majority of their water from drinking dew off of leaves and off of the actual enclosure itself. So you don't need to make sure you mist that thing down at least maybe once or twice a day. For one, to hold humidity, and two, to make sure your gecko can stay hydrated. Another thing I would highly recommend to get since we're on the subject of temperatures and humidities, go ahead and get yourself a thermometer or a hygrometer. Obviously temperatures are measured with thermometers and hygrometers measure humidity. But both of these are real useful things to have that way you can check all the levels for your animals and that way they can keep their environment at their optimal conditions. So moving on to tip number five and last tip for the day uh, is gonna be food for these guys. I use a mixture of different kinds of foods for my day gecko since they eat a varied uh, diet of different fruits and insects and things like that. I have some Sandfire Superfoods uh, mix that's specifically for day geckos. Uh, I'll put that on the screen here. And I also tend to use the Rapashi Crested Gecko mix, which on the back it also says it works for the Felsuma and Anolids and other things like that as well. So these two are really good options if you want to get you some something that's more like a complete diet for your gecko. And I would also recommend to use feeder insects at least maybe once or twice a week. I would try to offer one or put it in the enclosure and see if he'll take it. Uh, because sometimes they don't feel like eating insects, but they are another crucial staple of their diet. So if you guys watch the video all the way through, make sure you comment down below and tell me what your favorite part is about the tips videos or what you would like to see coming up on the future for Hostways Exotics. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next episode.